Good afternoon. Firstly, an apology. I have a bit of a sore throat, so I'm kind of hoarse, and I hope I'm intelligible. Uh, I don't know how you would like to uh, proceed further, uh, proceed in this uh, discussion. Uh, we have a presentation, and though my favorite format is question and answers. So what I would do is make a very quick presentation, and then I and my colleague Manoj uh, 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 would respond to the questions you have. Uh, Uh, the global scene, I suspect, uh, and so far as the global scene is concerned, you, uh, yeah, can I have that? Yeah. And so far as the global scene is concerned, you folks more than I are fami uh, fami uh, know it better. But here is our perception in so far as our te uh, the technology world is concerned. Uh, U.S. clearly the epicenter of hope and growth. Uh, it's looking quite positive. Europe continues in many ways uh, to stagnate. Only, we see only marginal growth coming up. Uh, in, consumer spending is increasing, but investment levels are low. Uh, but I don't see that as a negative because increasingly uh, European industries are recognizing that they are kind of non-competitive, they're losing the competitive edge and that is on account of series of laws which have been created for them partly in their own countries and partly out of Brussels. So there is a problem and therefore we are seeing opportunities and openings which were completely no-no once upon a time. Uh, they come with their own liabilities in so far as the, uh, the European personnel is concerned. But we see uh, openings there. First there were little cracks but we have now uh, got into uh, many of the European things into an integral part of the industry and with some success. Uh, Africa is coming up well. Uh, we, we don't have a very large exposure, but we are still working in about 17 countries there. Uh, early times, but we do believe it has a fair amount of potential. Uh, <coughs> Asia and Australia, New Zealand, different areas, but ANZ, because of the commodity crisis, they're seeing a fall in the value of their currency and the investment levels have come down, but still we see that there is a lot of potential. Uh, Middle East Asia is good, but Profitability there is a challenge, and uh, frankly, at least in so far as TechM is concerned, we haven't seen much growth. So this is by and large uh, the global scene as we see it from a very narrow t technology perspective. Uh, now, issue has arisen and issued a number of times that Indian IT industry has grown quite rapidly. It's clearly become a major force globally. But hey, what's going to happen now? Is it going to continue at the same momentum? Or is it going to come to a halt? There's a lot of issues on digitization. There are a lot of issues. I mean, a, a friend of mine who's a, a journalist and a thinker in this area calls, uh, designates us 
Indian IT industry has toast, by which he implies that's over for us. Uh, and as Mark Twain once said, the, the news of my demise is highly overstated. So I think the, the, that is an absurd conclusion, but it is there. So a lot of people are thinking that the world is going to change very, very soon, and the rate of change is accelerating at a very rapid speed. And therefore, with digitization, Asia and India will lose its competitive advantage and it will move back to those countries where it legitimately belongs, or that is their belief. And this spurt was an interregnum. Obviously, uh, having seen global trends and industrial trends, uh, from number of uh, uh, viewpoints in which I have worked, I think that this is not uh, a fair or a correct judgment, but we'll talk about it a little later. Uh, but having said that, I think we have passed, we are in, going through a number of stages in the IT industry. Again, I don't have to tell you that, you guys know it better. But up to year 2000, it was largely the cost arbitrage which was driving it. Uh, it was cost oriented. We were offering uh, lower prices and the spillover work was coming to us. After 2000, uh, the, it changed. Then we talked about domain expertise. We talked about accelerated time to market. We talked about quality orientation. We talked about end-to-end -end service. And since I have been working for, with the IT industry uh, for the last 20 years and having passed through those phases, I think this was the stage where the growth took place. And of course, then we had the bugaboo of the uh, Y2K, which really started the thing. And by 74, by 2010, we were a mature industry. Uh, then I think there was a qualitative change. Larger responsibilities came to us, uh, to the Indian industry, uh, and it became outcome oriented. Uh, is it going to come to a sputtering halt? I don't believe so, because now I believe at $120 billion a year, we have become an integral part of that industry. Uh, and we are no longer working on cost advantage. I don't say it is not relevant, but I do believe what is driving us and driving the IT industry is the latent expertise, the latent capability, uh, which a space which has been more or less abandoned by uh, uh, folks elsewhere. And so, therefore, India has emerged as the biggest force. And it's not only the Indian companies. Most of the multinationals have their largest uh, employee base in India and that's really not based on cost considerations, that's based on expertise. They can't get people of that quality outside. So, people who say we are toast, I think are underestimating India. I have not fully understood it. And that digitization has come in. Yes, but we have first movers advantage there and I don't believe that will have the kind of impact which is being anticipated or hoped for or wished for, put it whichever way, or, or uh, there are apprehensions. Look at the, whichever way you do. I think I am still very bullish on IT industry in India, uh, not because of cost, but because of capability. Again, 
And this brings me, again, this is just re-emphasizes the point I was making that there have been series of disruptions. Why I'm talking of disruptions is because the current move toward digitization, the cloud, and other new tools which have evolved, somehow states or the underlying belief is that the cost advantage is going to come down and therefore Indian industry capabilities will come down or their attractiveness will come down. So all I say is, my belief is it ain't going to happen. Uh, you have seen us evolve from 1990 to 2000 to 2007 to 2011. Multiple disruptions. And we overcame them, we mastered them. Next. So when we are looking at the disrupting elements, I wanted to put that in perspective also. Some of the disruptions are fundamental and we will have to adapt to them. We will need to innovate it further. We will have to make it better. Yes, the labor intensity will come down. But let's not for a moment forget that the demand is expanding in, at an incredibly fast pace. Uh, we have moved, the center of the world has moved from pure business to an individual. Individual has become the fulcrum which demands services. And you see that upheaval everywhere. But that has eliminated a lot of people, but one thing which is in forefront, one thing which underlies it, one thing which is the base of it is technology. So, as we, as we see it, the mix is changing, but we are right there. So I don't particularly worry about it. In fact, in so far as we are concerned, we almost revel in it. Uh, it's still a tiny sliver in so far as Tech Mahindra is concerned. I think we are about at about 10%. Uh, of our total revenues, but I also believe it will grow exponentially. I do believe that we are ready for it. Uh, in fact, most of the Indian industry is ready for it, and it will evolve along with the change as technology evolves. Next. As you will see, we also believe that what is the impact? I thought we'll also give you an indication of what the impact is on the customer spending pattern, changing sp uh, customer spending pattern, or more importantly, ch the change in how customer buys. Uh, I think IT-enabled businesses, our view is that in automating business process, we are going to continue as we are, and that demand is going to, by and large, remain the same, or what I, by same I mean grow proportionately to the growth of business. Transforming business process is going to be a huge factor, and that I think is going to grow, and IT-enabled products are going to grow. So again, coming back to where we started, how do I see the scenario? I just see the scenario as being pretty positive. That there is a belief that since labor intensity is going down, the industry will move, can move. Yes, if obviously it can move. That cost advantage will no longer be that significant. 
Yes, that is also true. But the fact is that capability will always be a requirement. And the capability and its advancement is here and not anywhere else in the world. So that is what gives us confidence. Yes, in Silicon Valley, a lot of things are happening. But its development and most of the backyard work is done out of this country. So I, for one, am not fearing the change at all. Uh, Manoj, would you like to add? Because I just wanted to set up the scene, and I think uh, the best would be uh, when uh, we respond to questions. But would you like to add anything? So I think the reality is if, if we look at uh, what is happening today, I think some of these technologies on the left hand side, whether it's cloud, social media, they're all coming together and maturing at the same time. And uh, so if, if we talk about uh, devices, sensors, I think clearly sensors are becoming cheaper every day. Uh, I think what that gives is an ability to uh, actually first customize uh, to an individual level. So whether it is an individual buying a car, you can actually enable through IT the process where you can customize uh, what he wants to the level that the color, the styling, etc., etc. That's one example of it. The other example of it is, I think, uh, from a perspective of decision making, and that's where the analytics piece comes in, I think there are avenues available for our customers to take more informed decision making to either save cost or increase the revenue, which, whichever way you look at it. And in a way, uh, I think people have called it various things, consumerization of IT, uh, how the individual has become the focus of, of, of the new tomorrow. But all of these are raising basically the expectations of, of the individual consumers across the ecosystem. And they all seem are happening over the last two, three years. We are seeing a combination of various technologies. And loosely, you can call them digital because the definition of digital is another matter by itself. Uh, every, every, uh, everybody's vision of digital is slightly different. But what we can all agree is that in broadly, some of the technologies on the left-hand side are combining together to provide a customer experience which is unique and personalized. I think that's, that's really the big change which is happening. Uh, can we move to the next slide? Uh, I don't know who has a... Uh, and what we are seeing is, uh, today if we see the innovation in, in some of the verticals we operate in, I think whether it is digital medicine, whether it is crowdfunding, I mean they are changing the way how business was done in some of these verticals. But today as I see it, are they uh, at an inflection point where they can dramatically change the spend pattern of our customer? Probably not. Can we foresee a future 5-10 years from now when these will be mainstream and, and then they will actually rapidly impact uh, the overall way the business is done? Uh, definitely yes. So in a way, I think we are seeing this period of churn uh, through, through the last 3-4 years and probably accelerating to a certain extent. But still, if I put together all the, all the mind share uh, of what digital has, I think the mind share is very high. But actual activity on the ground is still on the fringes and people are still figuring out what is the right digital strategy. And most of our customers are evaluating that and trying to plan the future uh, as we uh, enter this phase of uh, uh, disruption or uh, better customer experience loosely. Can we move to the next slide? And the interesting part is that adoption is uneven. We find that digitization in Africa has taken much greater hold than the US. Uh, absurd as it may seem, because they did not have the basic infrastructure. So money transfer 
one, uh, one of the products of a company is responsible for uh, transferring over $2 billion a day in Africa, which has made, and Airtel is the medium by which we do in work in 17 countries, which has made Airtel possibly the biggest bank. So the belief that digitization is uh, something which the developing countries are getting, developed countries are getting it, may be wrong. Digitization, you may see much greater benefit and adoption taking place in countries which are not that uh, forward economically. So this slide, I think, uh, if, if I look at what is uh, loosely required in the new, new era to succeed, I think clearly, uh, I think it is not an individual play, it's an ecosystem play. I think that's one of the things which has come on very clearly. And partnerships are being formed as we speak and there is no one provider who can uh, develop the complete solution. That's, that's the stage of evolution we are in. So clearly one of the success factors is how do you uh, tie up those right partnerships, how do you be the integrator, so to speak, of uh, various of uh, various partners and provide the desired outcome to the customer. The second thing is, I think as I referred to Mindshare, uh, if you talk to any CXO today, I think digital has a disproportionate Mindshare and then how to translate that into actual uh, programs, objectives and then help the customer through that journey. I think that's the second piece which, which I think the way we are approaching it is that we are investing in terms of uh, actually proactively providing some consulting services and right now what we are hearing as a refrain from customers is that they need to think through and align. Uh, uh, so there are some easy ones that okay maybe you can improve a certain outcome with a small project. So those, those are getting cleared but what is the digital roadmap of the company? Uh, so for example, one of our customers has said that from 20% of their consumers approaching them through a digital channel today, they want to move to 80% of the consumers approaching them through a digital channel in a matter of four years. So they are in the process of now chalking out a roadmap to make that happen and we are partnering with them through the journey and I'm seeing that kind of dialogue happening across many customers and and we are participating in many of those dialogues. The last, uh, the second last thing there is, uh, I think uh, the unit of measurement uh, has changed. So I think there is an expectation with cloud and some of these technologies that everything is a service or on demand. I think how do we provide that layer or how do we provide that facility? Uh, I think on the infrastructure side, we have already seen it. I think uh, there are examples. They, they are still being adopted uh, by, I would say, small and medium enterprises today. Uh, the big players are adopting the technology of cloud, which is allowing them to optimize the backend. But really, they are still not in a place where they are comfortable going to a cloud service provider. They would rather have their own private cloud. That's, that's the trend we are seeing in the marketplace. So, I think the, the challenge here is what everything is a service for a system integrator means two or three things. One is what is a partner ecosystem which can support that because ultimately it's a question of how do you balance out the risk which you are taking in, in, in that model and how do you distribute that across multiple partners in the ecosystem. And the second thing is I think uh, in terms of uh, how do you actually the, the old model of actually staffing it up uh, and then billing on a rate basis or a headcount basis is probably not as relevant in a, a serv uh, everything as a service model. So that's one of the areas. So if you look at some of our experiences which we have taken some, some gambles and some experiments. Uh, so we have done uh, I think a couple of deals in India for some of the telcos where 
we started off with a revenue share model so which is which is in a way kind of similar that the outcome which which is linked to our pricing is linked to an outcome where we need the support of an ecosystem to help make that happen so some of those experiences are there but i think in the future i think we are, there is going to be more emphasis on this is what we believe and lastly is the workforce uh, if you look at the workforce today i think our workforce uh, today is largely engineering and uh, uh, skills in it management and in infrastructure etc now a bulk of it is still relevant but we need to add skills and domain capability in the consulting layer uh, i think in the design space so clearly those are some of the priorities we are seeing as we go forward moving on to the next slide please so in, in the other element i think this is a little bit uh, to the point that how do we achieve that balance of managing this transition so one way is that how do we find the investment dollars to fund this kind of a change and one of the things is automation i think clearly uh, our internal initiatives today we our goal would be to be 20% faster and 25% more efficient and then use those dollars to retool and reskill as we go along and acquire whether acquire as in from the marketplace or acquire certain companies which are in this domain which can then actually help us further this uh, along uh, in terms of integrating some of these newer skills into our existing workforce uh, next slide please so i and i'm going to kind of summarize uh, uh, where we see it so the first one uh, the first bucket is clearly strengthening the core and what i mean by that is automation productivity more platform led initiatives which is taking care of our uh, current business and delivering more efficiently on that uh, the second bucket is the digital bucket we spoke about what is required there the third one is if i look at product ip led platforms so one of the things there is that ultimately we do believe that there are certain areas where we would we would need to own the ip also and we are participating in that through various means so you know uh, we acquired a company called fixstream uh, which is in the network analytics space we are doing some internal incubation on on ip led businesses comviva was an acquisition which we did again full ip i think they have an ip we need to refer to their uh, product which actually helps transact 2 billion dollars a day in africa so there are these other pieces which are there which uh, uh, help uh, help us get into that space and that would be in a way the tip of the spear wherever required and lastly is the digital businesses which is really uh, i think if we look at this wave of digitization one of the things we want to be able to say is that we will incubate certain businesses from a perspective of technology initiative and then demonstrate to some customers that we are able to run such a business successfully so payment bank is a good, good example we already have a platform called mobo money which does uh, wallet transactions and we have about 200000 subscribers on this and we have been incubating it for two and a half years so our thought process was that can we use that technology backbone now for a payment bank and then if we are successful in that can that be a good reference point for our customers globally saying we can transform a, a, a existing business and create a new opportunity for those guys so those are the three or four key uh, initiatives uh, i think what i would like to do is stop here and throw the floor open for questions uh if you want us to expand on any piece please let us know we we are happy to do that thank you
Yes, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I pick up from the first half of the presentation when Mr. Nye said you're moving towards a more quality service rather than using cost advantage, which we would rely on earlier. Now, in order to do that successfully, you need to position yourself as quality service providers in the minds of the customers who are right now banking on us to being cost-effective providers. Now, how do you make that successful transition? How do you position yourself differently? Because you're catering to a whole host of customers who you have to now go in with a different approach. The second, uh, yes, uh, please go ahead. No, I mean, to my, I don't have to make any transition. I do believe we are seen as a quality provider. Uh, whatever we have been doing, we have been doing critical tasks for them in every any sphere we have worked in. So that is one selling I don't have to do. What I have to bring to fore are new skills, and as I indicated, that we are already there. So I'm quite happy and sanguine about our capability and quality, and I think that is visible, uh, and I would be happy, my colleague would be happy to take you through our portfolio and tell you the kind of critical things we are doing for large mega corporations all over the world. Okay. Second part. The second part of my question was, as you're moving towards new business segments, as your colleague mentioned, with payment banks as well as wallets. Now, you will, these are different kinds of projects which will entail a different organization structure with your employees. So how do you go about incorporating those changes? So, so I think uh, whether it's a payment bank or mobile money, which is a wallet solution, I think the thought process is very clear. There will be a separate company, a separate management team. Um, uh, I think for us, uh, there are two objectives, as I mentioned. The first objective is really a, a technology demonstration. So we want to be the technology provider to that company uh, and then use that technology and refine that technology and potentially take it global. I think that's, that's one part of the story. The second part of the story is we are as much as an investor in that, which, which means that there's a certain allocation after that, it is expected that these businesses are independent and they either find external money and then grow or they are not successful and then we shut it down and move on. That's the approach we are taking. So there's going to be a separate management team, separate structure because some of these businesses we realize might not fit into our policy framework, in, into our employee uh, employee uh, practices, right? So, so that's, that's the way we are thinking about it. Um, another follow-up question would be, it would also require inculcating certain skill sets. Now, would you actually try and do that in-house, like pro train your existing employees, or would you like to recruit from outside for these new organizations and the new upcoming skill sets that you might require going forward? So there are two, three parts to that answer, right? The first part is, of course, uh, I, I do believe retraining and reskilling is is one of the biggest trends all of us have as Indian IT companies and the cap capability to retrain and reorient has is, is been there and every three, four years I think you would have seen large scale retraining and reskilling happening. So, so clearly that is an option number one and uh, uh, all of us are moving in this, this direction. The second, second thing is I think uh, if I look at uh, aspects around what we don't have today, right? I think they will have to be acquired from outside, but that is going to be a smaller percentage of the total workforce. Uh, and the third option always is is that uh, uh, you would go in for some sort of acquisition of talent in, in the form of a company. So uh, m and route is always available. Uh, and I think between those two, two routes, I think we would choose one which is giving us faster time to market, I, I would assume. And Thank you. I, let me put an addendum to that. This is not something new which is being thought about. This has happened right through our journey of the last 15 years. IT scene has been changing continuously. The role we have played has 
continuously been maturing more and more. And to beat those things, and working in healthcare is quite different than working for banking than working for telecom. So we have learned how to span different technologies and different ways of working while still being a part of this large uh, company. So in a way, it's business as usual, different as it may be. Yes. Yeah, <clears throat> sir. Just to uh, add on to what was mentioned earlier, uh, just to understand, uh, in the early transitions, uh, uh, and compared to this transition, do you think size is a hindrance for the Indian IT services sector? Because uh, what we, what the sector is today, uh, do you think that because of the size, the flexibility is not there, and probably you have to cannibalize a lot of your existing business to, uh, to get into the new business? Do you think that will become a hindrance? Uh, you mean large size will become a hindrance? Yeah. I mean, I'm not sure whether you think yeah, large, large size or small size. The large size, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I was a bit confused. Look, size gives us certain advantages. But the sine qua non of IT business is uh, nimbleness, uh, capability to recognize the change, especially change which you think is going to be fundamental or abiding and measure up to it. And you look at our journey or for that matter journey of every successful IT company. I mean starting from the days of Y2K to today, we have very different companies and it has happened almost seamlessly. So change is a way of life for us. And we are now going through another process of change. All the digitization, the movement away in many ways from business to the consumer. I mean, that is a qualitative change which is taking place all along the line. And how do we address con uh, the consumer directly? And that is the change we are going through. It's never easy, but this is something we've got used to. And sir, something very specific to Tech Mahindra, uh, given this transition, given the digitization, uh, a new layer uh, gets added to the uh, enterprise infrastructure, which is network, which was not as relevant before as it was, as it will become now, and specifically the security around this network. If you can just uh, help us understand how TechM will progress in this, what are your, because you have a very niche strength in network and network management. Uh, how do you see network now becoming more relevant to your customers and then how over the course of the next five to 10 years, the growth coming in this area and in security side, what are, what is your overall thought process? So uh, I would like to expand that definition a bit. So it's not just the network and, and we had defined the term NMAX, right? So we said network is prime uh, and then all of the other elements will reside on top of a network and come together through communication. So I want to define, redefine networks as communications and how, how, role will, how that role will play out. So if I look at every industry today, uh, so we are talking about uh, connected cars, smart cities, I mean connected homes, I mean everywhere the common word is, is, is really networks and connectivity. Uh, from our obviously heritage and strength area, that's, that's been a strength area. Uh, and I, I don't want to mix it with LCC because that's a different kind of carrier network. But if I look at our capabilities, whether it is uh, in uh, some of the new technologies uh, around cloud, whether it is an in, uh, ability to understand how, how communication network works and what are the possible interfaces and the partnerships we have in that space, I, I would imagine it would give us an advantage. Now, as I said, uh, my view is that uh, this is a fast developing space and Vineet mentioned we should be nimble. I think if I look at an ability to capitalize on opportunities, I think we have done fairly well in the past and I, I am pretty positive we will do the same in the future. Uh, the, the other thing is the ecosystem play, so we have tie-ups with uh, some of the ecosystem players who, who will actually help us uh, 
create this offering so telcos are obvious partners in this journey so we are partnering with some of the telcos and some of their initiatives around how to become a total solution provider in some of these uh, cases so overall i think uh, we believe that our network or communication strength is going to be a huge positive because that's that's the core of of the new world security um Sorry, security. So, so security, I think, see, uh, first of all, if I look at the mix change, and we spoke about the mix change in services, uh, security and analytics, I think, are going to take a bigger share of the pie as we go along. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned, again, the other point I made was that while SMEs might go to a public cloud, I think uh, most of the larger customers are going to a private cloud model. Uh, from our perspective we have I, i think close to a 50 60 million dollar securities practice and this is largely working on telco security so if you look at a telco they are providing pipes to uh, enterprises uh, i think if you remember a few years back we bought up security product called i policy uh, so uh, and so in short what i'm saying is we do have a robust security practice because of our legacy of on on the com side because ultimately if the pipe from the telco is not secure i think the telco business is is under threat and that's what we have been working with a lot of our telco customers and i think that is something which we are watching closely in terms of how to grow that business further and we are offering it to some of our enterprise customers today but having said that it is still only a 50 60 million dollar practice we have the capabilities we'll have to watch how it grows thank you so <clears throat> do you think the complexity of technology has only increased over the years uh, uh from you know custom application erp uh, now cloud everything is coming together you know the global 2000 uh, enterprises are not getting rid of their earlier uh, you know technology trend it has only increased and you know they have to manage all of those so the role of indian it or it services companies like you know uh, tech mahindra has only increased uh, in the current scenario uh, rather than you know getting impacted by some of the recent trends yeah i think you have a point here because we will have to play in multiple worlds and the the, uh, the subset to that is in the multiple worlds some industries are at some stage and other industries are at other stage but then i think that is the great strength of indian it that we have the capability and we have also shown uh, if i may say so again the industry incredible nimbleness in adopting and adapting to the challenges as they emerge so i am sanguine that these challenges are not something which will be over which will overwhelm us uh we have seen recently on a tech mahindra specific uh, that we have done some uh, reasonably uh, uh, good partnership for iot related uh, stuff with asl uh, you know what are the opportunities we are eyeing for uh, you know in that client specific or in a generic term in iot because everybody is talking about this being one of the fastest growing opportunity for in the technology space so uh, i mean air cell specific I, i also don't know the details so i don't want to give you a wrong wrong information but uh, clearly i think if i look at the iot space uh, i think we have been working on that space for almost 2 to 3 years now and uh, as uh, so i think if i look at uh, we are working with uh, i think milton keynes for the smart city initiative in 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 the uk uh, we have signed a mou with dubai for for some of the smart city kind of work so the second thing is in india we are working with uh, google on some of their connected initiatives so so there are series of things which which we are doing in terms of trying to enable iot the other side of the story i think if i go to engineering services the connected cars we are working on some programs with some of our customers on that uh, where we are at at this point on the pilot stage in terms of how how does the uh, 
sort of infotainment and how does it communicate back to a central point and how do you manage that whole process so that's that's another opportunity and but the the thing i'm saying is each of these is at early stages and there are multiple initiatives running uh, we would be happy to i mean we have a person who who actually knows all the details i'm i'm probably not the best person to articulate what we are doing in each one of them but happy to arrange a, a call or a, a discussion with him I, yeah. in fact we have done a lot in the uh, uh, world city jaipur mahindra world city jaipur uh, uh, we have done lot on connected cars almost everything for reva which is electric car but being produced by mahindras and similarly we are taking these capabilities to germany and other automobile companies so as i said as and when challenges appear uh, we do respond and on iot fair amount of work is being done early times by normal standards but i am sanguine that we are there just to follow up on my earlier questions that uh, one of the challenge that the sector is also currently facing is that globally the, a lot of countries are coming out uh, globally a lot of countries are coming out with uh, uh, what to say la st stricter labor laws which were earlier not present so recent example is uh, the the noise around immigration which was something two years ago in us there have been minimum wage hikes in 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 canada and and in uk and in europe there are a lot of there is a lot of noise around these labor and and stricter labor laws uh, do you think uh, four to five years down the line uh, how do you see our companies the indian it services companies uh, will there be a more uh, will the workforce be more spread out around geographies or or around other cost centers or or how do we as a as a sector will try to circumvent this uh, let me say we will not circumvent it uh point is we have certain comparative advantages when it comes to certain segment of the work and in the other segment of the work the local nationals have it we indian industry cannot survive it industry if they say everything will be done here we will have to become multinationals we will have to operate in other countries we will have to have their employees and more importantly we will have to have their management because if we don't do we will just stiltify ourselves and perhaps we will lose to ibms and accentures of the world so i think we have reached that stage and i think the senior managers recognize that over the next next 5 to 10 years the proportion of the local nationals will have to increase for, let me tell you for example we have how many 3000 african employees we have about 5000 filipinos working for us we have people in america working for us so and this will continue to grow and this is in the nature of any global business just just to add i think as a trend also if i look at the last 12 months uh the amount of locals we have added uh i think it is equal to probably what we have added apart from the africa example of course which we build up ground up in i am talking about the developed markets we have added more in the last 12 months than the sum total of whatever we have added before so so clearly that shift is happening that as our work scope expands we would be looking at more locals more near to customer and and some of these changes which we spoke about i think will require closer customer interaction as they go through their journey and and that that will help contribute to that yeah so just last question you know since we have privilege of you being here in a near term quarter uh, we are halfway through so uh, 
you know, is there any change? Uh, you know, are we seeing increased for low shutdowns? Uh, you know, how how things are panning out uh, for growth and margin? Uh, so. Long term, 10 year view to <laughs> this quarter view. I think we're spanning the entire spectrum. No, no. Uh, uh, you know, we are very long sighted, not short sighted. <laughs> so I can tell you the global trends. I can tell you what's going to happen five years from now. Don't ask me what's going to happen this quarter. 